Shalom Lam. Uh, first and foremost, I of course want to start off by giving all praise unto Yahweh, Baha Shim Yahweh Shai, uh, Yahweh, which is the name of the Most High, and Yahweh Shai, which is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is just going to be another, uh, you know, uh, video, you know, I guess we could say uh, gospel videos here, um, or street teaching videos, uh, for lack of better words. Um, so, you know, I'm going to, hey, we're going to jump right into it, man. All right, because, you know, my recorder only gives me 30 minutes here. So, you know, hey, we got to, you know, take what we can. But anyway, hope this is edifying. But of course, you know, I'll start off again with saying all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for this truth. And, uh, you know, first things first, man. Okay, I'm going to jump right into it. Somebody asked me the other day, okay, I got a question um, on the, um, the other, you know, video I did when, you know, when I was out there, you know, teaching last time. Uh, somebody asked me in the comment section, they asked me about, um, you know, Isaiah the 14th chapter. Because I made a statement in the video that Isaiah the 14th chapter was talking about, um, you know, the king of Babylon. And what they did is they said that, um, that it is not talking about that. Okay, they said that Isaiah the 14th chapter is not talking about the, uh, the king of Babylon, but actually talking about, um, you know, spiritual demon Satan. Okay, because again, these guys, they got it all, uh, what, what could be the word I could use? They got it all mixed up and confused, okay? Because again, they believe that, you know, that there was a war in heaven, right? And it's, this individual believes that, because I, I asked him about it. He said, oh yeah, I believe that, right? So they believe that what? Yeah, you know, a long time ago, there was a, uh, you know, a war up in heaven, you know, God, you know, was fighting against Satan, right? And then, you know, they'd say that what, that Satan got, you know, kicked out of heaven. They don't know what that's talking about because, for one, even though everybody talks about that story, right, the Christians always subscribe to that, that, you know, uh, once upon a time, you know, Satan fought with the Most High in Heaven. And, uh, you know, he got kicked out to the earth. They all, they all say that, but nobody can prove it. That's not in the Scriptures. Where does it say that in the text? That's not in the text. That's not in the Scriptures. And then what's funny, because what they do is a lot of them will go to, what is that? I believe that's Revelation, the, I believe it's the 12th chapter, right, that there is war in Heaven. Right, Satan fought with his angels right against the angels of the Lord and he got kicked out onto the earth right and they say well see that that's you know the war in heaven well, wait a second how could that have already happened if according to you guys right that's in the book of Revelation so you guys believe that hasn't happened yet but yet you're going to use that to confirm that the story that already happened in the book of Genesis that's illogical that's ridiculous okay um anyway um, I'm going to, we'll get into it, we'll bring up the book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Alright, which I, this video is not necessarily just based on that, of course, but I do want to address it because he was very sincere with his reasoning, absolutely. Uh, yeah, he's just, uh, you know, sincerely wrong, okay? Uh, let's see, Isaiah chapter 14, and bear with me seconds, right, uh, Isaiah 14 and 1. Just make sure the record is on. Okay. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and a stranger shall be joined unto them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and for handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve. Okay, that, that's all good. But let's get into uh, what's next, because this is really where you got to pay attention. I'll let the wind calm down for a second. For a second. Got to hold the phone in place a second. This wind goes. It should be good. That's Satan for you, man. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, wait just a sec. All right, I apologize about that. This uh, it's pretty damn windy out here, man. All right, but hey, that's <laughs> you know that's just Satan for you. Anyway. 
get back, back to the book of Isaiah, 14th chapter. We left off at the, uh, the fourth verse. It says, Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How has the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord had broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. Okay? He would smote the people in a continual, with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest, and is quiet. They break forth into singing. We'll skip down unto uh, the main uh, a point. Okay? Uh, let's see. Let's go to verse 9. It says, Hell from beneath is moved uh, for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth that have raised up them up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. And they shall speak and say unto thee, How art thou also become weak as we? Thou art become like unto us. Thy pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread unto thee, and the worms cover thee. Now listen here. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, the son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Right, so... You got the context, you know, as I, you know, I went over at the beginning of the, um, of the, uh, you know, the chapter, as you see. So, Isaiah the 14th chapter is talking about the king of Babylon, okay, as I clearly have proven, okay, it's clearly has been proven in the text, okay. So, the brother who asked me that question, you know, uh, I hope that, you know, cleared that up for you. Okay, I mean, you can read on, and it's, you'll see the same thing. Okay, it's talking about the king of Babylon. Okay, I wanted to, uh, to deal with another question that somebody asked me, because uh, we got, uh, you know, especially if you know, we go to these, uh, you know, these churches out here, right, this, the, uh, not the seven-day events, but you go to the, uh, you know, the Catholic churches, man, you know, some of these other, you know, doctrines, they're out there teaching what? That you can eat what you want. Right, they're teaching that you can eat whatever you like today, man. All right, because you know they teach what that the uh, you know that the, the the dietary law no longer is um you know in effect. Okay, but that's that's not true. All right, that's a damn lie right there, man. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove it. All right, so you know you got all these guys, which I see him, man. You know, I asked um what's that guy? I believe his name was uh. Yeah, be the uh, the ant preparedness. You can look his channel up on YouTube. I asked him a question because he did a video, right? He did a video when he you know was talking in his car, um, and he, he mentioned something about you know, oh yeah, you know, today you can eat what you want, you know, because I noticed, I noticed um, what he did is he did a video about um, you know those Raymond noodles, right? You know, for for you know his prepping and whatnot. So I asked him a question because I noticed that on the the noodles. One of them was chicken, one was uh, uh, roast beef flavor, and the other one was uh, the other one was shrimp, right? Now, you know, going back to the scriptures, you know, what is that? I, I believe that's uh, um, Leviticus, the 11th chapter, right? It gives you the dietary law on what you can and cannot eat. Um, so you notice that shrimp is forbidden. You can't eat that. So I asked the guy, um, you know, I asked him, you know, well, wait a second, man. You claim that you're, you know, Christian. We get you're on, you're on here eating these things. Okay. So, long story short, we went back and forth. You know, in the comment section, you know, he, he gave me a couple, you know, precepts. Here, for a second. He gave me a couple precepts, and I gave him a couple of mine. You know, pretty much it ended with you know him just you know going by what he wanted to believe, which is you know just usually the way it works out. He's got to, you know, watch this camera here because I don't want it to tip over because i got a faulty tripod here. So, uh, I just excuse the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Excuse my hand. Um, anyway, you know, getting back to what I was saying, man, you know, I went back and forth with him, but his whole thing was basically, ah, oh, well, you know, the New Testament says you can. It doesn't say that. Where the hell does it say you can eat those things in the New Testament? And then what he said was, uh, you know, that, that Christ, you know, came to do away with all that, right? So we can eat those things today, right? Today it's fine to eat those things. Maybe back then you couldn't, but today you can. That's not true, okay? And all you got to do is go to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Bear with me a sec.
put my bookmark back in here. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and uh, verse 17. All right, this is the words of Christ here, right? This is in red letter. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. And listen here for you pork chop bean and pastors. It says, For whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right, so we're we're out here teaching you what? We're teaching you to follow the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Okay, you better be to the best of your ability following those laws, man. Alright, of this book, right? The six hundred and thirteen commandments. Okay, now today, you know, we can't keep it, you know, and it's in its entirety today, you know, because, you know, well, you know, hey, what is that? Job nine twenty four, the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. Which my, I also want to address that, so Lord willing, I remember that precept. You know what, let's even go get to that real quick. Because the mind of God brings this up sometimes. Um, Alright, so long. Okay. Um, but as I was saying, you know, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, about the dietary law. You know, don't, don't listen to those guys, man. Those guys are sitting here saying that you can you know you can break the laws okay you don't have to follow those today now don't believe that we're hey look y'all christian pastors out there deceiving the people but you know what we here at ett right end time teachers right or you know you know you got other groups out there you know great millstone you know sakari you know um l-u-y-c all right isupk right all the hebrew israelite groups which i want to say is it's your shalom to all of those you know groups out there man okay because hey we're you know, teach him to uh, follow the dietary laws, okay, and to follow all the laws and scriptures, okay? Let me just set that up real quick. Yeah. All right. Hey, as I said, man, I got to get a damn better tripod, man. <laughs> but it's all right, you know, it's all, it's what it is, you know. Anyway, you know, again. All right, I'll just, uh, Lord, hey, look, that's all right. I came with a backup plan. Just hold on a sec. Came with a backup. All right. All right, that'll be much better right there. All right, that's much better. Um, just look at me from sideways here. All right. Uh, anyway, you know, getting back to, you know, what I was, uh, you know, previously saying, you know, they're out there teaching what? That you don't have to follow the, the dietary laws, man. Okay. That's, that's completely going off. Okay. You guys out there who are teaching that, you're completely going off. Just check the video time, make sure we're good. Okay, we're all good. Uh, just, just go to the book of, um, let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 66th chapter. All right, and this is a cut on you guys, man. Okay, this is a, you know, this is a haymaker, so to speak, inside joke. Um, but, but look at this, okay, look at this. All right, now, you know, we all know what? You know who the world you know calls Jesus Christ is you know spoken about in the you know the Old Testament um, but um, you know now we know that right and that's in what is that Isaiah the 63rd chapter right that's speaking about Christ um, Isaiah the uh, not Isaiah um, uh, yeah I believe it's Isaiah the ninth chapter all right um, that's another one Okay, but anyway, getting back to the point, I wanted to go here to the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse, um, let's just start at verse 15 so we can get the context, but the point I want to bring out is in verse 17. It says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind, 
to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword would the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. But listen here, listen here. Okay, it says, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the mist, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse, shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Right, so there we go. That's saying what? That when, you know, you know who they call Christ, right? When Christ returns, those who are eating those type of foods are going to get put to death, man. And I'm, I'm reading that right out of the Holy Book, man. It says that. All right, so these, uh, you know, phony baloney, you know, uh, pork chop eating, you know, pastors, man. All right, these, these guys, hey, y'all y'all better not be following those guys, man. Okay, because if you are, man, well, that's, uh, hey, y'all better check yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, y'all better check yourself. Okay, following these phony balonies, man. Got no business doing that. All right, that's that's that worldly doctrine, man. You got what? You got, two, what is it? I believe it's 2.2 .2 billion Christians in the world. You know, last time I checked on, uh, you know, the statistics of it, and you can do it yourself, might even be 2.5 billion. Okay, the scriptures speak about what? All right, a narrow path, man. What is that? That's uh, what, uh, Matthew the, uh, chapter 7, verse 13, man. And reiterated in, uh, what is that? Uh, second Ezra is the seventh chapter. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I remember I wanted to bring up something about um, uh, Job, the ninth chapter. Mind of God, my boy. Listen here, my man. Okay. You asked uh, me to address this, so I want to do that. Okay, I want to address this verse because you always bring this up. You know, he uh, he says that this is, you know, dealing with what we got going on. You know, you have to wear, you know, your uh, you know, your face mask, you know, to go in anywhere. So he says that this is talking about now. Now, of course, our um, outlook on it is this, this already happened. And it's just poetic. It's not literal. Anyway, enough rambling on. We'll get to the verse. Uh, Job chapter 9 and verse 24. It says, The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Now, he uses that to say, We'll see, but that's talking about what's going on right now, right? Where they, you know, having everybody wear a face mask. No, they ain't talking about that. I Now, I could see why you might say that. I'll give, I'll give you that. I can see why you might, you know, uh, why you might come to that conclusion. I can see that. All right, fair enough. But, dealing with it, we can clearly see it's just poetic, man. Okay? I mean, what does it mean by he covers the faces of them? It means what? He, he covers them, right? Takes them out of power, man. Okay? And puts up his false, you know, narratives and his false, you know, ideas, for lack of better words. Okay? Um, bear with me a second. Like, what is that? I believe that's... um. What is that? I believe it's Daniel 7 and 25. Right, it says he shall... Um, let's see if we go ahead and get that. Damn, I can't remember where that verse is, man. All right, but it's uh, the verse that speaks about um. Oh, damn, I can't remember that. And it would have been a great verse to bring up because it had to do with his uh. Oh yeah, should scripture say what? The time shall be given into his hand, or to Esau's hand. He shall think to change the times and the laws, man. Right, that's what this man did. He he fought to change the times and the laws. So that's what it means by um, you know. Uh, covering the faces of the judges okay is this man been given the power to change the times and the laws for example they say it was the year 2021 we don't know if that's true how the hell can we know All right nobody knows okay because for one you know uh, oh it's just as a cut on those guys out there who are saying that the the Sabbath is um is Saturday right Friday uh, sundown to Saturday um, 
here's the cut on that because you had a few calendars throughout history. I believe one is called the Gregorian and the other is the Julian, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all can correct me down below. But what it is is basically throughout history kept changing the, you know, the, uh, the weeks, right? The days of the week. And, um, you know, I believe it was Roman week. They had eight days of, of the week. So it's like, wait a second. So you Christians out there, it's like, well, wait a second. How can we really know what day the Sabbath is if we really don't even know what the hell day it even is? For an example, today's day is, um, what is it? I believe it's uh, May the... Um, May the 23rd of 2021. Now, how do I know that it's not Saturday today? How do I know that today is not Monday? How do I know? And the answer is I can't know because you got to go by what they tell you. Okay, so that's a cut on that, you know, all together, man. Okay? And it's a bunch of phony baloney. Okay, it's what these, you know, guys would be out here, you know, teaching. Let's check the video time. They'll be teaching out here, you know, in, in these churches, man. A bunch of nonsense. All right. Anyway, just get something real quick. All right. Uh, I just wanted to touch on the uh, the new covenant real quick. Okay, because you know you got a lot of guys out here, man. They're teaching what they were living, you know, under the, uh, you know, the new covenant right now. Okay, they were teaching that we're living under the new covenant. That's not true, man. Okay, the new covenant is going to be established when the will calls Jesus Christ returns. Okay, when the hell is shy, the will calls Jesus Christ. When he returns, he's going to come and set up his, uh, you know, his kingdom, you know, here on the earth, man. Okay, then when that happens, that'll be the new covenant. Okay, as of today, we're not under the new covenant yet. You know why? I'm gonna, I'm gonna read. We're gonna get the scriptures. We're gonna get the scriptures. Okay, but the scriptures say what? That under the new covenant, that one will not have to teach his brother, because all will know the Lord, man, and all will know the law in their inward parts. That ain't going on today, man. And if you cats out there think you, you know, are under the new covenant, well, my question to you is, can you name all 600? Uh, 613 commandments off the top of your head no in fact i would <laughs> to be quite honest a lot of us couldn't even name all the you know the 10 commandments off the top of our heads so given that fact how can we say that we're under the new covenant okay anyway as to give the authenticity to my statement we're going to read it okay jeremiah 31 and 31 it says behold the days come says the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with them, with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. Bear with me a second. All right. It says, but this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in the inward parts and write it in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus says the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and an ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. Right, but the point of the matter is what? All right, we just read that in the, the New Covenant, you're not going to have to teach your, your neighbors anymore, okay? Because all are going to know the Lord, man, okay? You can't, you can't tell me we're under that today because as I, I already, you know, asked the question, if you can't name all the laws off the top of your head, well, how the hell are you in the New Covenant if the Scripture literally just said that we'd all know the law? Right, in off the top of our heads, man. Right? Let's even read the verse again. Um, uh, Jeremiah 31 and 33. It says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in the inward parts and write it in their, Slakia, and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they 
shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Clearly that hasn't came to pass yet, man. Clearly, anybody that's saying that we're under the new covenant is just an idiot, man. All right, given the information, you know, presented. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't see how one could, you know, argue with that information, man. Okay, I mean, you know, it's very simple. Let me just check the video time. All right, doing all right. Um, but yeah, man, you know, getting back to, uh, you know, what I was saying, you know, hey, look, man. You know, oh, and that's another topic I wanted to, uh, you know, discuss, man. Okay, the whole, um, the hell doctrine, right? The hell doctrine. You know, that's that's just a damn myth, man. Right, the, the hell doctrine. We all, we've all been brought up in that, right? We've all been raised up in, in the church, man. Okay, so, you know, the way that we, you know, think is narrative, narrated by the, um, you know, by the churches. Okay, so, um... Now they they made the whole thing up about you know the uh, the hell to to scare people right you know to believe that you know if you don't pay the church money or if you do these wicked things you're gonna die and go to hell that's what they want you to think because if you do the research on it it was um, a scare tactic they would have people pay the church you know to forgive their um, you know their sins right and then in return for paying the church you know an insane amount of money. They would be, um, you know, pardoned, right? They'd be forgiven, you know, so they don't go to, you know, hell, right, Hades, um, you know, when they pass away. So it was just a, a made-up thing to scare people, okay, when you do the research on the subject, okay? Give me a drink real quick. And, you know, I know my time's running out uh in the next couple minutes here so i'll just throw a couple precepts out there y'all brothers can look it up yourself if you're not familiar with the subject all right you know you can disprove the hell doctrine oh it's real quick what is hell according to the bible might have god asked me that and i'll answer that according to the bible hell can be three different things one is the earth right the earth is the place of judgment what is that uh, that's ecclesiastes the third chapter but i saw a place under the sun and judgment was there Okay, so hell in the Bible, one uh, usage for the word hell can mean the earth. The second one can mean a condition of suffering. And the proof of that, what about uh, Jonah, the second chapter, in the second verse? Right, and we all know the story of Jonah. But it says, what, that Jonah, he was in the belly of the fish. But what happened? He said the belly of the fish was hell. Read uh, Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, proves that hell is a condition. And then the third usage of the word can mean um the third usage of the word uh, can mean, um, let me go over it again, the earth, uh, a condition of suffering, or the grave. Okay, the grave is the third um, usage for the word hell. Okay, it just depends on the context that the word is used in. Okay, say for an example, man. You know, you have uh, the English language. They say, uh, fun fact, by the way, they say they say that the hardest language to learn in the world is the English uh, language. Because, say, for an example, let's check this out. You have uh, words um, that can mean, uh, you know, a couple different things depending on their context. Say, for example, if I say watch, right, I could use it in the sense of, you know, watch out over there. Right, there's a bear over there, watch out. Or I can use it, say, you know, hell, can you got a watch? Can you tell me what time it is? Okay. Or another usage, right? You know, I could I could watch a movie, right? So, you know, that's just one example, okay, of you know how the English English uh, language is difficult to understand, okay, because you have you know words that can be used in different contexts or in a different context to be correct um but it depends on what it means given the you know context that the word is used in okay uh so that's a fun fact uh, just to throw that out there okay so that answers his question okay that according to the skip cheese okay um hell is um either the earth 
a condition of suffering or the grave. That's what hell is in the Bible. Okay, and anybody saying otherwise doesn't know the scriptures. Okay, in mind of God, I know you're going to see this, so I want you to answer for me, what did Jonah mean in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 2? If I am wrong, because you said, oh, no, hell isn't a condition. Well, wait a second. Well, what did Jonah mean? And I want you to do a video answering that, man. All right, I need you to answer that for me. Okay, and if you can't do it, well, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um... Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse um, let's start at verse 15 that which has been is now and that which is to be have been already and yet how it requires that which is past right so these guys out here talk about you know the whole slavery thing oh that was you know so long ago right that was all so long ago you know we don't have to you know let's not even talk about that that was so long ago but wait a second the Lord requires that the Lord requires that man we just read it, right? The Lord requires that which has passed. Okay, so, you know, y'all that, you know, want to just forget about you know, the whole slavery thing, which I remember seeing an article last year, man. You know, they were trying to ban, um, or I should say stop teaching, you know, black history, you know, of, you know, slave trade and whatnot. You know, they want they don't want to teach that in schools anymore. They want to wipe that and rewrite, you know, all the, the history, you know, textbooks for the schools. So that the children don't learn, you know, about that right now. Okay, that's what they're trying to do. But hey, look, guess what? The Lord requires that, man. Okay, it's just the blood of his people, you know, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the true Jews of the Bible, it was shed here in America, man. Okay, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. Okay, so America has to pay for the bloodshed of the black, Hispanic, and Native American. Okay, that was, this land was saturated Okay, to use a million dollar word, this land was saturated with the blood of the Lord's chosen people, man. All right, America was built off the, the back of the so-called black men, which are the Israelites of the Holy Bible, man. All right, and that's a whole nother story. Uh, you know, that's, that's a question for another what if, inside joke. Um, but anyway, man, you know, let's check the video. All right, I'm pretty much going to call that the, uh, the video there. You know, I hope that was... Uh, you know, edifying for you, Wakia, man. If anybody made it this far into the video, I want you to put hashtag, uh, just put hashtag Apocrypha in the comment section down below. If anybody made it this far into the video, uh, in mind of God, I want you to answer that question I asked you, man. I want you to answer that. Do a video response and answer that question I have asked you. Okay, but anyway, you know, with that being said, you know, I'm going to end off by giving all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yashai for this truth. I'm going to say Shabbat.